All right, so um, we're going to do some more arranging in this video, so it's still under kind of probability and counting. Uh, but we're going to look at some more difficult examples. So, for example, if you have repeated letters in a word or else repeated numbers in a list of numbers, uh, it becomes a lot more difficult to calculate the different amounts of arrangements. So, for example, if we look at the word rat, there's no letter that's repeated more than once. And the word book, obviously the letter zero or O, sorry, is repeated uh, twice. So there's going to be very different ways to calculate each of these. So we'll do rat first just as an easy example. So um, since there are three letters and none of them are repeated, if you want to get the different, how many different ways it can be arranged, it's just three factorial, which is three multiplied by two multiplied by one, and that'll give us six as an answer. Okay, I'll scroll down, we can have a look at book. Since there are two repeated um, letters in book, it's a little bit more difficult. So originally it would be four factorial if there were four separate letters and that for example would say that b-o-o-k -O -O is the same as sorry is different to b-o-o-k -O -O and also that say boko and boko are different so it would count this and this and this and this as say for example one two three four separate arrangements the reason that is is i'll just get rid of these dots even though um, so basically that that O would have changed places with that O so that this one this book is different than this book and then the same with the boco and this boco um, but obviously when you're looking at it they're the exact same because the letter is the same so let's say for example the word was bork instead okay so if you imagine instead of O and O you have O and or you have B or OK and you have so B or K O and B O K or so hopefully that kind of demonstrates that the O's are changing places so the different arrangements if you just use the four factorial but obviously in real life you can't see any difference so you can't basically use the four factorial it's, it's where you start but it's not the correct answer so just get rid of all this stuff um, hopefully that kind of explains what I'm about to do next uh, it is a little bit complicated to wrap your head around but the method itself isn't too difficult. So what you can do is you can just say four factorial because there are four letters, then divide it by two factorial because one of the letters is repeated twice. So in this case, we'll get four by three by two by one divided by two by one. And you can either cancel the twos and the ones or else you can just stick it into your calculator. But the answer will be 12 different ways the word book can be arranged, okay? Uh, hopefully that makes sense anyway, and we'll do a few more examples just to um, to show it a little bit more. All right. So in this next example, we have the word keeper. So how many words can the how many ways can the word keeper be arranged? So the same thing. There are six letters in keeper. So if every letter was unique, then the answer would just be six factorial. But because e is repeated three times, then we're going to have to do a slight change. So the answer is going to be six factorial divided by three factorial and this time we're just going to stick it straight into the uh, into the calculator and the answer is going to be 120 so the idea is you uh, you say six factorial depending on how many letters there are in it. so in this case there are six letters divided by uh, the factorial of the number of letters that are repeated so in this case e is repeated three times so you divide it by three factorial so hopefully that explains the the method we'll do one example where we're repeating numbers uh, just to kind of show you the difference it's the same the exact same method it's just a little bit different because it's a list of numbers instead of words so this one's going to be a slightly more difficult example so for example we have how many ways can these numbers be arranged we have 19 we have 16 we have 20 we have 18 we have 17 16 and then 19 again okay so those are all the numbers that we uh, that we have so we see that 19 is repeated twice there's 19 and 19 and also the squiggly line, 16 is repeated twice, 16 and 16. So the rest of them are all individual. So altogether, there are seven letters. There are seven different numbers. So if you wanted to arrange these in a different order and sequence, then it would just be seven factorial if they were all unique. Okay, but because they're not all unique, you can't just simply do that. You have to divide it by. So in the last case, we only had one letter that was repeated. So we divided it by saying keeper up here. We had keeper and e was repeated three times so we divided it by three factorial okay in this case since we have two separate things that are repeated it's not divided by four factorial because there's nothing that's repeated four times uh, it's not that the answer is and um, I'll go a different color go white 
divided by 2 factorial, and that 2 factorial is because of, say, the 19s, and then also 2 factorial multiplied by 2 factorial. And that, other, that second 2 factorial is for the 16s, for example. Um, oh, no, go back. Um, yeah, so that it's just a little bit different if there's two separate numbers that are repeated. So if we want to stick that into the calculator, you'll get quite a big number. It'll be 1, 2, 6, 0, or the amount of ways that, um, that this can be arranged. So yeah, that's basically it for uh, repeated numbers and letters. Hopefully that method all makes sense. Um, it's sort of repetitive, then you can just do different, uh, different sorts of words, but it's the same basic principles from those few example questions. Um, yeah, in the next two videos, we're gonna be doing the box method and then we're done with probability. So the box method is when you have loads of restrictions on uh, the way they can you can order the letters and the numbers. Uh, so it's quite difficult, but it's the way you can solve the most complicated types of questions. So yeah, we'll see you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, thanks for watching.